Schwartz here, nextlevelguitar.com, and I'm thinking of other things to show you guys, and this is something um, that is in, um, it's a chord progression that uh, happens in a lot of jazz standards, um, but you can find, um, you know, you can find it in, in soul, R&B music, and uh, fusion stuff, and basically what we call it is a minor 2-5-1. Now, you don't really have to, you know, to get something from this, you don't really have to understand the theory of that. I always think, you know, you shouldn't be scared of, of, of what's called theory because really it's just the, you know, why something sounds good or, or how to apply something. So the more of that stuff you can get, you know, it's great. But um, it's always nice to be able to make music right away. And I think, you know, that, that's what we're going to do right now is we're going to just make some music. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our this first chord, and here's what it sounds like. Ugh, what is that? <laughs> it's, uh, it's called a D minor 7 flat 5. Um, it's also got the name D half diminished. It means the same thing. Now, if you're looking at what, you know, what's called the real book or a jazz book where it's someone's shorthand writing on this chord... Um, it would be a D and a circle and then a line through the circle. Put my first finger on the root, just like that. And then what I'm going to do is I can actually just with these three fingers, think of it like, um, you know, it's exactly like a, like a D chord shape, you know, right there. But then you play it right there. And then all we have to do now is add our pinky to the sixth fret of the B string with this little D looking shape. It sounds like this. Okay? It's a cool way to learn it, you know, as opposed to a brand new shape. You can visualize that it's related, at least shape wise, to another chord that you probably know really well. Okay, so the root's right there. It's a D minor seven flat five. Um, I usually say D half diminished, it's easier. But either way, same thing. Okay, then we're going to go to a G7 chord. G, you know, just a G bar chord, like if you took a G major bar chord and took your pinky off. It's a G7. Now, this particular chord in this three chord progression is the chord that you're going to hear um, in jazz music being altered a lot. So there's a lot of fancy things I can do to this G7. I can change notes around. I did to it but basically we're just gonna do G7 and then right next to it is a C minor 7 so now I took this little shape and I scooted it over a string and now my root is the C on the A string the third fret right there okay and here's what it sounds like That's a, a minor 2-5-1 in the key of C minor. So that's what that would be called. And what you see in jazz a lot is um, there's also major 2-5-1s, but minor 2-5-1s in different spots, like... Um, way to um, change change your keys around and you know that's what jazz is it's kind of changing its its tonal center or its key um, uh, quite quite often all right but what you're gonna see in a lot of jazz tunes 
is this little movement right here. Sometimes it's fast. Sometimes it's for a while. Since I called it a, two, a minor 2-5-1 in C minor, you can play the C minor pentatonic scale over that whole thing. And let's see if I still have it here. that you can experiment with if, if, uh, if that's pretty easy for you at this point. You can actually play what's called the C harmonic minor scale over that. But really specifically over uh, when you get to that G7 chord is really where it's gonna where it's gonna shine. Um, and it looks like this. I might as well just play it. sounds like a gypsy um, but you know I'm gonna apply it now and and you know the cool thing with like the modal stuff and the fancier scales is you can you know just think of it you know I like to when I teach it especially just think you know plug in that pentatonic and then start you know use that as the skeleton and then start to visualize where those half steps are and where those little shifts are it's really the easiest way to do it because most people learn that pentatonic and um, and play it for a while before they start to learn the fancier scales. So the thing about the harmonic minor scale is if you've been learning those modes um, or if you know it's the minor scale basically if you, it's also called Aeolian. Aeolian and the natural minor scale are the same thing just like the D half diminished and the D minor 7 flat 5 uh, are the same thing too. Ah! Brain aneurysm! <laughs> uh, uh, so what you can do is you can take the natural minor scale and the seventh tone of the scale one two three four five six seven is just up a half step apply it the right way um, then it, it does sound real jazzy so I'm gonna um, play a loop of that uh, minor 2-5-1 in C minor and I'll do some bluesy C minor pentatonic stuff but then I'm also gonna apply elements of that C harmonic minor scale and that's what this is that I am about to do <laughs> seeking out new sounds so even if you're like totally into blues you know try that stuff out and you'll be surprised try it out a little bit and you'll start to hear it in music uh, you'll start to you know oh wait oh I think that's uh, it, what was that I hit that okay so once again Marty here nextlevelguitar.com um, you know lounging away 
<laughs> all your lounge music needs. <laughs> Bossa Nova and uh, Cuban. Pan flute? Uh, well, pan flute is just too hard. I gave up. I gave it up. Sorry. Understandable. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway. But anyway, click the link. Be our friends. And, uh, and there's so much more to learn and to grow. Grow with us. <laughs> all right. We'll see you next time. All right. Thank <laughs> you.